representative of the fighting 33rd, Alicia Reese. Bishop, how are you? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm doing great. And to your to your guest, our future judge, and to Mother Wisdom, and just wanted to call and just, one, thank you for keeping the issue on the burner because I know uh, from Tracy's standpoint, I mean, she's got this huge fight ahead of her. And uh, by you keeping the community updated, they were hoping that it could die out and right. people would forget about it and not hear much about it. But you kept it on the front burner, and I want to really commend Tracy on her staying power because a lot of times many of us, our problem is we don't have the staying power, and they thought by now she would get tired, she'd yep. get weary, and she would go away. And so I just want to uh, commend her, tell her to continue to, to stay strong. We've had a lot of... A lot of victories they're trying to uh, trying to tear down. Uh, I have requested uh, Secretary of State uh, not to spend any taxpayer money on this. Of course, he hasn't responded back to me, uh, but we're going to keep the pressure on at the state level. And uh, House Bill 194, dealing with all of these new reforms on the voting we came on your show to talk about, it passed and it was signed into law. Uh, we have now collected a, a signatures to get petitions now. We're trying to put that on the ballot, and I'm trying to get language in there that deals with the provisional ballot so we don't have to deal with this issue ever again. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, when that those petitions come out, we're going to need folks to sign petitions. They told us, do not put this voting on the ballot. And I'll tell you, there were, there were some in our own party who were concerned because they said, this issue doesn't have a whole lot of money. And uh, they say when you don't have a whole lot of money, they don't think it can win. We feel that this is a people's issue uh, and that we're going to get the signatures. And uh, the Ohio Legislative Black Caucus is leading the pack in putting this on the ballot so that we could stand up as voters and mm -hmm. say, no, we don't want these reforms that are going to suppress the votes. And we think if we could tear it down in Ohio, uh, it'll send a message across the United States because they're really after President Obama's election right. to make sure that we don't come out and vote. So all of the things that they're doing now is to tear us down and make us get weary and make us get weak. But I'll tell you that when they say no over here, we're going to go over to another door. We're going to keep going until we kick the door down. Representative Reese, what are some of the provisions of the bill that just passed that we need to be aware of? Well, in this bill, it will uh, make it almost illegal. If you go into the right uh, polling location, say you go into one of the gymnasiums that we have as a polling location, and they have, say, several tables. And if uh, a poll worker knows when you come in that you are at the wrong table, you need to be at the next table, it's almost, it makes it where it intimidates that poll worker. They'll be afraid to tell you, even though they know, Bishop, you should be at the next table. They'll be too afraid to tell you that and allow you to vote in the wrong location. Wow. Uh, and secondly, it will throw away the provisional ballots. I mean, the, the issue that we have going now, at least we're able to challenge it. Uh, in Franklin County, they count those provisional ballots. It would make it illegal. They would not count the provisional ballots, uh, meaning more and more ballots would be thrown away. So, um, you know, those are just some of the provisions, uh, and they're looking, uh, they're trying to get it on. I don't know if they'll get it, but they even want to go as far as the voter ID piece, which is not in this one, but if we, if we show any signs of weakness, they'll put a voter ID piece on there as well. Um, so we are saying that one, the big problem in Ohio is provisional ballots. If we had a system that counted these provisional ballots, Tracy Hunter would be judged right now. We wouldn't mm -hmm. have all of these legal battles that we're going through. We wouldn't have a juvenile court that doesn't have the right amount of judges because we're still on a – I mean, it's almost next November. We're still battling right. something that's just, that was supposed to be decided in last year of November. So wow. uh, we wouldn't have those issues if we had a uniform provisional ballot uh, system that does not penalize a person – uh, if they happen to vote in the wrong precinct and they're eligible to vote. So we're trying to put these things on the ballot so that the people can make it law because, unfortunately, up at the state house, they just can't get it right.
Representative Reese, does it also deal with, um, I believe there was a clause in there that stated that even if there is poll worker error that results in the person going to the wrong uh, precinct to vote, but the right polling location, that that will not, they their vote still will not count. So I, that, is, that is correct. Yes. Their vote wow. will not count. So essentially we're throwing away provisional ballots. Wow. Mm, 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 and mm. so the, even now when we have a case here uh, in, in this juvenile judge race where we're able to at least say, wait a minute, these, these votes should be, we won't even have that argument, whether the votes should or should not be counted, because this would create a state law that those votes are no longer eligible to be counted. Wow. Right. It sounds like every um, issue that came to light in our case, that through House Bill 194, they've tried to close the, loop, the loophole on to make sure that it never repeats And I guess that's again. why they're calling it the Tracy Hunter effect. Wow. Mm. That is mm, something. Mm, mm, mm. And we need to reverse it because uh, my, my house bill would allow us to say, wait a minute, we do have a problem. Let's have a uniform system of counting the ballots. Yes. And so me and the Secretary of State had some words. We got into it. And he told me that these people are breaking the law. And I told him he's going to Jim Crow. And so me and him had words. Wow. Uh, and now we're saying, wait a minute, the Congress, I mean, the Ohio Legislative Black Caucus is saying, we don't take it to the ballot. And then also, we're trying to get the Congressional Black Caucus to call for an investigation. Wow, that is Wonderful. really something. That is, now, what what are the instructions to the people? What should the people be doing at this time? Well, number one, you, we need to make sure we keep our pressure and our support on this race with Tracy Hunter. She needs you to come out or email or write a letter, do that. Number two, we need to stay tuned to your show so you can keep them updated on everything that we need to do as we follow the case. Uh, number three, we need to keep the pressure, getting the information out to beyond the Ohio and Cincinnati walls of what's going on in Ohio. Uh, number four, we need to sign these petitions. As soon as I get the petitions, I'm going to make sure I contact you to get this information out because if they yes. don't believe we can get the signatures to get it on the ballot. We need to get these signatures and put this on the ballot. We put it on the ballot, it becomes a national issue because Ohio is the battleground, not next year, but this year yes. with SB5, with um, the voting piece that we're going to put on the on the ballot, and they're putting they're trying to repeal health care, so all of the attention will come into Ohio. Wow. If we defeat them, we send a message around the country. All right, and that's why they are fighting Ohio and certainly Hamilton County so hard. Absolutely. Well, this is the battleground, and what what this what they're upset about is that the Tracy Hunter case brought to light what probably has already been happening for wow. some years that we know nothing about. Wow. Mm, mm, mm. I mean, I'm pretty sure I have no doubt. many votes have been thrown away and no we have doubt. no clue. No doubt. No doubt. Wow. Wow. So I think this is, a, this is about voter suppression. This is about voter disenfranchisement. Uh, this is our moment. This is our moment to stand up for what many, we always talk about people died for the right to vote. But we got people out to vote. Now we've got to stand up and protect the integrity of the vote by making sure your vote is counted. Uh, Representative Reese, did this bill include anything related to Sunday voting or early voting? Absolutely. Sunday voting is not allowed. Wow. Uh, early voting, they have reduced the number of days dramatically. The last three days uh, going into the election, which is the highest amount of people going uh, for early voting, uh, has been eliminated. What? Uh, and then there have been times in other parts of the state where they've had satellite locations, so we make it more convenient for people to go vote. They've closed that down, not allowing satellite locations. Uh, the other thing is there are uh, many um, places across the state that would pay for your postage when you are sent an absentee ballot. Therefore, uh, if you're, you know, you don't have a whole lot of money, it doesn't stop you from being able to vote absentee. Well, no longer will they be able to pay for postage. Wow. So they are making it more and more difficult. And in fact, one of my colleagues on the floor um, from a rural area, older gentleman, got up and said, nothing was wrong with voting. Let's go back to the 1960s when everything was great. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Wow. So that's the mentality of taking us back.
Mm. And they're hoping that they're sending so many things. We're fighting on so many fronts. Uh, you know, I'm fighting on the budget. I'm fighting on voting. I'm fighting over here because they want to take away workers' rights. That we fight so much that we just get tired. And uh, we just can't get tired, and we're going to have to continue to, if they're strong enough to put it out, we're strong enough to fight against it. All right. All right. I have one more question for you, uh, Representative. Is it true also that if you arrive at the poll, say the poll closes at 7 or 7.30, if you're standing in line at 7.30 and there's a long line that they can just cut it off, is that true? My understanding, we brought that up, and they said that was uh, not the case. Uh, but what, the way we read the language, it leaves it too open for um, for them to use their best judgment. In other words, one polling place, they said, wait a minute, the law says i got to cut it down. Another place said, wait a minute, the law says you were in line. So we feel it leaves it too open, uh, and it causes, again, uh, disenfranchisement based on what polling place or what part of the state you're in. And we thought that that was, um, should not, we, we don't have a problem, and we should have never had it addressed in this bill. All right. All right. Well, thank you so much. Uh, Representative Reese, for taking out time and getting that information to us. Please stay in touch with us. We'll have you in on the show again. And we thank you for fighting. You have stood yes. for many, many, many years. You've stood for the people. And so I know there's many times you felt like you were standing alone. So if there's anybody that can relate to what Tracy Hunter is going through, it's certainly State Representative Alicia Reese. Yes. Well, I tell you, you're never alone as long as you got God with there you. you. Go. And that's, that's what my mom and my dad taught me. Just keep standing. And sometimes it looks bleak, uh, but there is light when you stand for right. So All you just right got to keep on fighting. All, All right. right Thank you so much, dear. Okay, have a good one. You God too. Bless you. God bless. 513-799-1620.